I remember growing up as a Muslim kid, uh, we grew up in the Middle East. We practiced, you know, uh, Islam. Uh, we would go pray, uh, especially on Fridays. I remember going to the mosque on Friday. It was, it was sort of a big deal. Um, uh, we practiced five times a day as well. And so uh, everything that we did was pretty much centered around our beliefs. And I remember growing up in that culture, wanting a relationship with God, but knowing that this was it, that this was the religion that you go through, that Allah was the God uh, that I served, and that Muhammad was his prophet. And uh, uh, the way to reaching Allah was to follow the teachings of Islam and follow the sayings of uh, Muhammad, which are the Hadiths. Growing up, I was um, you know, used to uh, Hindus, Sikhs, um, even Christians, or Catholics. Uh, I had friends who were Hindus, close friends, and so we talked about religion. But pretty much, uh, I was I settled in my mind that since I was born and raised a Muslim, I would always remain a Muslim. Uh, I'd heard about uh, Jesus and. and uh, um, the, sort of the gospel and what he, you know, did, but I was really not interested because, um, you know, to me at the time, uh, Islam was not just a religion, it was sort of a nationality. That's who I was. And so it would be ridiculous for me to even consider um, changing my nationality. Um, even though you know, I did, have, I did have reservations about certain teachings. The thing about Islam is that it really discourages um, questions. Um, questions and doubts are, you know, not having a faith. And so that was discouraged. My brother was in college. And so he would come, um, you know, in summer vacation. And he started talking about um, Christianity. He brought a Bible home, and we started to have, you know, several debates on it. And most of his friends were, you know, saved and had a personal relationship with Christ, and so he began to talk to me about it, and I was very defensive and really did not care about it. Um, while that was going on, I was also attending a weekly meeting with my brother. They show a movie about the rapture. It really intrigued me. And they end the night with prayer. And um, as they close, I'm sitting in the back, and I flippantly say a prayer, which is pretty, um, uh, I don't know, bold, maybe ignorant, um, and arrogant. I pretty much said, listen, I don't know if you're really true, or I don't even believe this garbage, but if you're so true, why don't you just come down and show me? That was my prayer. Um, well, uh, several nights uh, after that, I was in my room, and uh, it was about 11 or 12 o'clock at night, and I had just finished reading a novel, um, and uh, put my put the book down and stretched, just stretched on my bed, and uh, as I was stretching, all of a sudden I noticed that the room was getting just, uh, I don't know, dark, but not really physically dark, it was just getting weird and uh, evil and uh, I was like what, what's going on and as I'm thinking these thoughts something uh, grabs me from my shoulders and drags me and pins me to my pillow and you know at that point my body begins to react and finally the door opens up and I'm thinking it's my brother that's gonna walk in and rescue me but in walks this figure which later on I found out was a demon and as it walks to my bed, it sort of is communicating that it's going to kill me. And I, I'm convinced now that if it gets me, I'm dying that night. You know, at that same moment, I think, I, I was just going through my head about, okay, Allah is, is the God of Islam, is this, can He help? And I just knew, for some reason, this was beyond Him. And so I thought, Jesus, did I, can He help? And so, as I'm thinking these thoughts, this figure is coming towards my bed. He reaches my bed and then disappears. I can't see him anymore. Whatever was holding me down, you know, gets released, and I'm, 
I can move again. So I got up from my bed and ran out of the room, woke up my brother, Mahmoud, and asked him, you know, told him what had happened. And, and he at first said, did you have a dream? And, and I said, no, this was real, this was real. I remember still saying, listen, my shoulders are hurting from whatever was holding me down here. And so he began to uh, talk to me about um, the whole experience. And I was like, you know, that's, this is great, but I am terrified. So help me out here. What's going on? And I said, you know, I really believe this thing is going to kill me. And he said, well, um, there is only one person that has authority over demons and angels. And I said, who? He said, it's Jesus. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm praying to him and I, you know, whatever, uh, you know, sign me up pretty much. And so um, that night uh, we prayed together I, I, and my prayer was, um, I don't know who you are, Jesus. Um, I don't know if I can call you Lord, but I need your help. Uh, and I've heard that you're the only one who can save me from this and keep me from this. And so I'll give you my life, I'll give you everything I have. And then my brother prayed for me. Uh, and so after the prayer, uh, you know, felt better, but not, you know, totally well. And, uh, and so uh, he said, okay, well, we'll see you in the morning, you know. And my thought was, uh, move over because I'm sleeping with you tonight. And uh, he said, no, why don't you go back in that room? And I said, are you crazy? I'm not going back in that room. And he said, no, you should go back. He said, you're going to trust Jesus, so go back in the room. So I go back to the room and I turn off all the lights, take this Bible that my brother gave me, and uh, so I'm reading it. It's, you know, he told me to read John, so I'm reading John. But all of a sudden, my body begins to shake uncontrollably. And I'm going, oh no, here we go again. I'm just waiting to get pinned down again. And, uh, um, you know, I just find myself sitting on my bed with my eyes open, staring into one corner of the room where it was just lit up with this glow of uh, this presence. I believe it was the presence of Christ just introducing Himself to me. And I remember just looking in a corner of that room and it was amazing to me because it was this, it, it was, there was so much peace. Uh, I think the best way to put it is that the peace was so aggressive uh, that it just f took over every thought, feeling, emotion that I was feeling at the time. And it just, it was utter peace. I don't think I've ever felt like that since. Just an amazing amount of peace. And I remember just staring. And what it actually did as well is it put me to sleep. And I just remember just looking at it and I think I said cool or something like that. And, and I fell asleep. After that night, I, uh, uh, you know, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I knew that I had just experienced um, you know, Christ. And so I remember talk, having conversations with my brother about salvation, you know, and uh, saying the prayer, sort of the, uh, you know, going through the Romans road or the prayer, which talks about, you know, believing and accepting and confessing that Jesus is Christ, Lord. And, uh, uh, so we kind of did that together and then uh, I remember even on TV when I would watch shows and they would talk about accepting Christ, I would do it again. So I think I've prayed the salvation prayer about 10 times or so. Just wanted to make sure. Um, but it's radically changed my life. I think my life uh, has been different, but my thoughts have been different now too. They're, my views on God have radically changed. Uh, in the past, uh, you know, God was a far off God in Islam. Uh, not really relational. You kind of just did the the deeds, and you're in hope for the best. Even now, if you ask a Muslim, you know, if he's going to heaven, he would say he doesn't know. You know, it all depends. You know, um, and they just say, you know, inshallah, which means you know, God's will by God's grace will happen. And uh, um, but now it's very different. Uh, I know I have the assurance of faith now. Before. I thought that you had to do a certain amount of things to get closer to God. Now uh, I don't have to do, I cannot get any closer to God. Um, now my intimacy with God can grow 
and my love for him can grow, but as far as he's concerned, he's as close to me as he's going to get. I think that people long to be intimate and long, and long to have a, people to know them and really, really know them. And it is amazing to see a God who really, really knows you and who can be so intimate with you and give you a purpose. I think the biggest thing for me has been the fact that since I've met Christ, I have found what I have been created for. I have found a purpose. Um, and I know that the purpose of life now is to get as many people to experience the love that He has.